This jar contains all of the landfill waste that me and my boyfriend have produced in the last six months. Crazy, right? But how is it possible to produce this little waste while still having a normal and busy life? But first of all, what is zero waste? Zero waste is a philosophy or a movement in which people try to reduce their waste, both of the recyclable and the non-recyclable one. So while not producing any waste will, of course, build the ideal goal, it's not really possible in today's society. So zero waste is actually more about trying to do your best, trying to reduce what you can. But why is waste important? Every year in Greece, one person produces an average 497 kilograms of waste. This is the waste of two large lions, or that of seven adult people. Not very sustainable. But why do we produce this much waste? Where does it come from? It is important to remember that we live in a linear economy. A linear economy is a system where resources are taken to create products that then have a short life and become waste very soon. We live in a linear economy which therefore makes, takes resources and wastes them every day. And what is worse is that while recycling still does a lot and allows for materials to be reused in new products, it still consumes so much energy. And very often, it's not really done properly. And for materials like plastic, even when it is recycled, it can only be done for a certain amount of times, which means that all of the plastic that we use is destined to go to landfill at some point. And this is terrible, because today everything comes in plastic, or is made of plastic. And so, when this plastic is not recycled or doesn't go to landfill, it goes to the seas, in the oceans, in nature, creating huge ecosystem problems. According to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, it is expected that by 2050, there will be more plastic than fishes in the sea. And so, what can we do? If everything is so hard, if everything is so full of waste, what can we do? Actually, a lot. Because every time we buy something, we're telling the market, we're telling the company that we like that product. We want them to keep producing it. We don't want them to change it. So by making better choices, we can actually create a change. But let's take a step back. Why did I start caring about waste all of a sudden? I'd like to say that one day I was just walking around and I had an epiphany and I just realized that I was living a very wasteful life and I needed to change. But actually, I found my path all thanks to a fever. I was at home, I was sick, and I was really bored. I was just on Facebook, just reading what was in my home. And then I saw this article, and it was about a girl called Lauren Singer, and he talked about the fact that she produced very little waste, and she made a lot of her own products. And I just thought, this is really cool. Why don't I try? And up to then, I was a little bit interested in sustainability. I recycled a bit, but I wasn't really doing anything particular, so I was a normal person. And so I decided to try, and I made my first toothpaste, and I made my first deodorant, and I kept making more things and making more changes. And the more I did this, I realized that it was actually fun, and it was so empowering, because not only I could reduce my impact on the planet, but I could actually do it very easily, and I could be independent from a thousand of businesses. So how do I do it? How did I manage to reduce my waste this much while still having a normal life in a normal city, while still going to universities, working, and especially because I live on a low budget. I started by making some changes and by changing some things that came in plastic for more sustainable ones. For example, I use a bamboo toothbrush. A bamboo toothbrush works exactly like a plastic one. It still has plastic bristles, but all everything else is made of bamboo. So everything else apart from the bristles can be, can be composted. Then I started using natural loofers. Natural loofers can be used for a thousand of things. You can use them to wash your dishes, you can use them in the shower with soap, we can use, uh, use them as body scrub. And the more I made changes, the more that I realized that it was actually easy. Another thing I changed is I went back to solid soap. Soap bars and shampoo bars, which work exactly like the liquid options, except they last longer and occupy a lot less space. And then I started making more of my own products and I started using more natural ingredients. And I realized that a lot of these recipes were really simple, and they only took two or three ingredients, and very, and very often they were the same. And so then I started thinking about food. Food is probably one of the most wasteful things, because it's one of those things that it's really hard to change. 
everything everywhere seems to come in plastic, especially in the UK. So we started making more of our, of our own things. We make our own bread, we make tortillas, we started shopping at local markets because there's more unpackaged stuff. And then we started looking for shops that had unpackaged sections, like the one in the picture. So we just go in, whenever we go grocery shopping, wherever it is, we just bring our own bags, we bring our own produce bags, we bring our jars, we fill them in with whatever we want, how much we want, and then we go home without creating any additional waste. In these past two years, we lived in two different countries and three different cities, so we didn't always have these options. So what we found to be a good alternative is to buy in large quantities, because that's what unpackaged stores do anyway. So for example, pasta. I'm Italian and I eat, a lot, I eat a lot of pasta. And in the UK, it's quite expensive. So what we do, we always order it in five kilo bags. We just order a few of these bags every few months. We don't have to go buy it all the time. We save a lot of money and we produce less waste. So about money, you might be wondering, is it expensive to do these things, to live more naturally, to produce less waste? Actually not, because while on one side I spend more for plastic-free alternatives and sometimes for unpackaged options, I spend a lot less on all the other things. I need to buy a lot less disposables, I need to buy a lot less products, I make all my cleaning products. And so overall what really has changed is the way I spend my money. I spend my money better. I spend my money while trying to choose quality instead of quantity. I buy better quality food, I buy better quality clothes, but I buy them less often or I make more of my own and I make my own things last longer. So you might be thinking, this is nice, but it's really hard, it's too many changes, I cannot do it. But the thing I prefer the most about zero waste is that actually, it's about making small changes. It's not black and white, it's not about perfection, it's exactly the opposite. It's about feeling empowered and doing a little bit, few better things, so that you have a better impact on the planet, but just what you can, and respecting your own limits. So, for example, in the summer, we go to this small Italian island, and of course, it doesn't have zero waste options. It doesn't have a package free stores or any of that. So, we just go and buy in normal grocery stores. We still bring our bags, we still bring our jars, we still try to avoid plastic. But if we need to buy something in plastic or in non recyclable packaging, so be it. It doesn't make me less zero waste. So, let's say that now you're interested. What can be some practical things that everyone can do without spending more? The first one, one of those things that you hear all the time, bring a water bottle with you. In places where water is drinkable, it is actually a lot more safe to drink water, tap water than bottled one, because tap water has to be controlled a lot more often, while bottled water is controlled only, only once in a while. So bringing your own water bottle will make you save a lot of plastic and literally hundreds of euros per year. Another thing that I found out when I moved away from Italy was that it's very common in other countries to just take away, to use takeaway cups for coffee. In Italy, usually you just take some more time in the morning, you go in the coffee shop, take your coffee, chat a little bit with the barista, and then go to work. It's a bit of a relaxing moment. But in a lot of other countries, it's not like that. So a good alternative could be to either do it like Italians, it's really nice, or otherwise, to just bring your own mug, you can bring your own flask, whatever you have that can fit something in it. And that way, you avoid the disposable paper cups that are actually not really made of paper. They're made of a mixed material, which is not recyclable. Another one of those changes that you always hear, but no one ever does, including me, before starting this journey, is to always bring a reusable bag. It's one of those things that really, really takes zero effort, but it's really hard to change habits. So what I did at the beginning was I put one reusable bag in all of my bags and my backpacks so that I always had it with me no matter what I was using. And now, I always remember. Every time I go out of my home, I always remember my water bottle and my tote bag. And my keys sometimes. But I think my favorite thing is to bring my own food. I'm a very picky person. It's really hard for me to find foods that I like. And so bringing my own food allows me to save a lot of waste because everything you buy is usually packaged and it has disposable plastic utensils and it allows me to eat what I like and to save a lot of money again. Another thing I started doing a lot lately is to buy secondhand. Buy, buying secondhand is an easy way 
to do sustainable things with spending less, because it's basically reusing. You're taking something that someone else was not going to use anymore, and you're going to use it yourself. There's a lot of sustainable companies, but a lot of times, of course, this means fair wages, so they can be a bit expensive, especially for students. So buying secondhand can be really, really a good alternative, especially because today it's becoming really easy. There's dedicated apps, websites, there's a lot of Facebook groups, there's a lot of stores where you can buy secondhand, and so you can find literally everything, including specific items. The last tip is a bit more student-related. Change your highlighter for a pencil one. Pencil highlighters work exactly in the same way and have the same colors as marker highlighters, but they last longer. You always know how much there's left, which can be great in period of exams, and they don't fade away on the pages. The last thing is to learn to refuse. Refusing the things that you don't need. Refusing the things that you know you can avoid. For example, refusing plastic straws. 99% of the times, you will not need a plastic straw to drink your drink. Or, for example, refusing free items that people give sometimes on the street. So next time you need to go and buy something, ask yourself, do I really need this? Is there anything that I could choose that is better than this one? And already by asking yourself these two simple questions, you will make much better and more sustainable choices. So in, in practice, creating less waste is actually possible. And together, we can make a change. And I think that we owe it not just to ourselves or to the planet, but especially for all the people that will come after us and live on this planet. Thank you.